In today's video, me and Sarah from 445 Designs are doing a mystery box challenge. Dixie Belle Paint Company sent us both a box full of products. We have no idea what's inside. It's unopened. I've not opened it yet. If you guys aren't already subscribed to Sarah's channel at, over at 445 Designs, go ahead and do that because um, she is so talented. She's super creative. You're, you're just gonna love her channel. Every time I watch her videos, I'm smiling. She's just kind of like a ray of sunshine. So the anticipation of opening this box is kind of driving me crazy. So I think let's go over to my workbench right now and just open it. Opening the box and seeing this transfer, I was excited. I think this transfer is so beautiful, so I was excited to use it. Looking at this blue, I've never used it before. So I was still excited, still feeling positive. Oh, peony, I love peony. There's a lot of that in the transfer. And then this is kind of the moment where I got a little nervous. That is Daisy, that yellow. I've never used it. And here, gilding waxes. Okay, I got excited again. I'm just feeling positive. And then opening this, I knew it was going to be the sea spray, which is a texture paste. And then I started thinking, what am I going to do for this project? Looking at all of the products, I... I'm not gonna lie, I was a little rattled. I'm not used to using these super bright colors with a bright transfer and then the texture additive with the gilding wax. I just felt like this was very loud and way out of my comfort zone. And here's the piece that I'm gonna be painting for this. At this point, I'm not gonna lie, I'm completely rattled. This is all in one day. Um, I opened my box, I got my piece, so I just started cleaning it, and I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. I thoroughly clean my piece, and I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Um, when I'm done cleaning the piece, I rinse it with a rag, a wet rag with water, just to make sure there's no cleaner residue left on the piece. Now I'm using Dixie Belle's Mud in white just to fill in any scratches or holes. I know that no matter what I do with the piece, I'm going to need to add some slick stick. Some of these older French Provencial pieces have a really, really shiny finish on them. So for me, I know that it's not going to be a bleeder, but it's so slick that I just want to add some slick stick just for that extra adhesion. And I add two coats on the entire piece, the top, the sides, the drawer fronts, just everywhere. I wait two hours in between my coats and I wait overnight to paint my piece, to do anything. So I did end up sleeping on it, on what I was going to do with this piece, and I came up with an idea. Sometimes when I'm painting my furniture, I'll let YouTube music videos play. And... There was this music video that I've watched over and over and over, and the background is this beautiful sunset. So this was sticking in my brain for some reason. And I thought about these colors, and then it occurred to me that if I mixed yellow and pink, I could get an orange. And if I mixed the pink and blue, I could get a purple. So my plan is to do a gradient sunset look. At this point, that's stuck in my brain. I have no idea how I'm going to use the transfer yet. Um, I don't know how I'm going to incorporate the gilding wax, but I'm thinking a gradient um, sunset, sort of just blending these colors together might be really pretty. So I just went for it. This is my first coat. On my first coat, I'm usually just practicing. I'm seeing where I want to apply my colors. It's a little bit of trial and error. I'm seeing what looks good and what doesn't, and I can always refine it on my second coat. But I have to tell you, the first coat looks so good that I'm not even gonna bother showing you my second coat because I did the exact same thing. Earlier, you had seen me mix 
the yellow, and the orange. I really didn't need to use those while I was blending. The colors blended very nicely on their own. So I'm just gonna use those cans for my hardware. Here's where I add more blue to my pink to make more purple. If you guys are enjoying this video, I would love it if you hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos, I've been trying to upload every Friday around two o'clock. So if you wanna see a weekly video, you could also subscribe. I'm just using a rag to wipe the purple off when I want to go back with the blue and refine that blue at the bottom. Here I'm moving along with my pink and I'm moving the pink up the dresser because once I put my yellow on, we're gonna blend that orange right in between the yellow and the pink. I'm blending a piece. I like to keep the drawers in, but I do end up um, you know, going back and fixing the sides and the top. I just, to get a nice clean blend, you, it's easier, much easier to do it with the drawers inside the piece. And I start from the top and I go down to add my yellow because once the yellow hits the pink, we're gonna start making that orange. When I'm applying this yellow, it is intimidating. It's so bright and I've never really used this yellow before. So I don't know, I keep thinking about the transfer and how this is all gonna end up looking and I'm very nervous. I will say though, I was feeling a little bit more positive at this point because the blend was coming out really pretty. So I was positive, just not positive on how I was gonna incorporate the texture paste or the transfer or the gold. <laughs> And like I said earlier, for my second coat, I just followed this exact same process, just refining it. And then for the sides, I did the exact same thing. I just brought the top right over to the sides. And the sides can be a little tricky because the transition between both, you want them to be pretty seamless. So I had to kind of, like this, I had to move it to the front, kind of check out the front and then go back to the sides just so that my lines were nice and even. Now for the top, I add two coats of Daisy to the top. And at this point in my head, I thought that I was going to lay the whole transfer on the top of this piece and cover the Daisy so it wouldn't be super loud. It took me three days to come back to the piece after I laid Daisy down. I had to think really, really hard on what I wanted to do. And I decided that that Daisy Yes, it's loud, but it makes the piece. It makes it a real statement. And I ended up putting the transfer on the sides because the gradient colors are so bright and beautiful in the front that I wanted to leave them alone. I wanted them to stand on their own. And this transfer is just so gorgeous 
that these sides, it almost looks like there's framework to show this transfer off as if it's its own picture. I was not going to use this piece of furniture for this project. I got it for it, but I just didn't think that the colors in the transfer would go with it. And I have to say, by the end of this project, I felt like it was almost meant to be this way. So to apply this furniture transfer, I just took it off the backing paper, stuck it on like a sticker, and then used that stick to rub it on, and then slowly and carefully remove the front paper, and then the transfer just sticks to your piece. And here I'm just lining up the bottom of the transfer to match the top. When I apply my full transfer, I just take a sanding sponge and I go over it pretty lightly just to make sure there's no wrinkles or air bubbles. I want it nice and flat before I add a sealer to it. Now to seal the entire piece and my transfer, I'm using Dixie Belle's top coat in satin and my Dixie Belle mini brush. I apply a total of two coats of my top coat on this entire piece because at this point I'm done with the transfer and I'm done painting. Now for the sea spray. I did not forget about the sea spray. Usually when you're using sea spray, you add it to your paint when you're painting your piece for a textured look. I am doing it a little bit different. I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna make a thick paste and do a raised stencil. On a high traffic area, I would go for Dixie Belle's mud when I'm doing a raised stencil, but I think I wanna add it to the sides of the drawers. And since nobody's really gonna touch the sides of the drawers, I think it'll be absolutely perfect. Now, when applying a raised stencil, I wanna make sure that I'm just coating the top. I don't want it to go under my stencil. We don't want there to be any bleeding. So I carefully apply it and I'm not pressing down hard. When I have the entire stencil covered, then I start to smooth out the top layer. And that's just to make sure that it's gotten in every part of the stencil. After a few hours, when the stencil is completely dry, I take my gold gilding wax and I just lightly place a little bit on the raised stencil. Now for the hardware, I'm adding two coats of slick stick. Then I add two coats of paint on each handle. I decided which color to use based on where they were gonna be placed on the dresser. So I'm using pink, orange, and purple. At this point, I was relieved that I did end up mixing the orange and the purple after all because I did need to use it. And for sealing my hardware, I used two coats of Dixie Belle's Gator Hide. I did apply my apricot gilding wax, the chameleon wax, to all of the handles. You can actually see the iridescence there. For some reason, I didn't end up recording that part. 
And then on the raised details, I'm using the gold gilding wax. Looking at the piece all together, I felt there was something missing. I ended up adding gold gilding wax to outline the drawer fronts, and I added it to a few more spots. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow them. Golden, golden, golden. I even added the gold to outline the flowers. And at this point, I was getting really, really excited because this piece started to turn. It started to take on a whole new look. Here's a quick reminder of what it looked like before. And here it is today. I learned some lessons doing this challenge. I learned that I will no longer be afraid to use bold colors. I learned that taking chances is so worth it. You never know what you're going to come up with. Just trust yourself. I love the mystery box challenge. I would love to participate in it again because it took me so out of my element. And I think that's where I needed to go to spark that creativity. I feel rejuvenated. I feel excited for my next projects to come. I can't wait to watch Sarah's video. Sarah is an outside the box thinker. She is not afraid to try new styles and new techniques and she just goes for it. So I can't wait to see what she came up with. I will link her video down in the description box below so you can check it out. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time.